Now let's do a quick summary of the section which is financial management functions. So this is the first section of your syllabus. In this particular section, there are four areas that you should know. The first area is the financial management function. Under the financial management function, the first one that you should know, what is financial management? So what is financial management? It is very simple. In financial management, you should know how to manage your financial resources efficiently in order to achieve the organization's objectives. And the next one is main areas of financial management. There are three main areas in financial management. First one is how to raise funds. So you need money for the investment purpose. You need money for the working capital purpose. So how to raise money for these purposes. And the second one, how to invest. So let it be for the investment purpose, for the capital investments. Let it be for the investment, for the working capital investment. You should know how to invest your money. And the third one, you have to know how to monitor and control. Monitor and control your whatever the financial resources that you have. So raise in the funds and invest in the funds. Let it be for the capital investment. And let it be for the working capital for everything you should know it. So there are three main areas in financial management. What are the main areas? First one is how to raise the funds that you need for the capital investment purpose, for the working capital purpose. And second one, how to invest like for the capital investments as well as for the working capital purpose, how to invest. And finally, how to monitor and control whatever the financial resources that you have. And the next you should know the difference between financial accounting management accounting and financial management so it is very simple financial accounting you know recording whatever things happened in the past okay so that is something like financial reporting you are preparing income statement balance sheet cash flow statement so those things will happen in the financial accounting and what is this management accounting very simple accounting for management in order to management to take informed decisions good decisions they need good information. So whatever the accounting that you are doing for the management, it is management accounting. So financial accounts, mostly it will be used by the external people and management accounts, mostly it will be used by the internal people. And the next one is financial management. As I told you, financial management, it is very simple. Simply it is managing your finance. That is what financial management is. And the second main area that you should know financial objectives and the corporate strategies financial objectives and the corporate strategies under that the first thing that you should know there are three main financial objectives so what are the main financial objectives of an organization so there are three main financial objectives first one is shareholder wealth maximization so when it comes to the shareholder wealth maximization, you have to talk about the dividends as well as the capital gain. And the next one is the profit maximization. When it comes to the profit maximization, you should talk about the increasing the revenue and decreasing the cost. And the third one, EPS growth, if not earnings per share growth. So these are three financial objectives of an organization. Out of these three financial objectives, if you ask me what is the primary financial objectives, normally we say primary financial objective is the shareholder wealth maximization. And next you should know what is the relationship between the financial objectives and the corporate objectives. So the relationship between financial objectives and the corporate objectives. So I told you there are certain financial objectives of the organization which is shareholder wealth maximization, profit maximization and EPS growth. So these are certain corporate objectives as well. But when it comes to the corporate objectives, what you have to understand, it is not only shareholder wealth maximization, profit maximization or EPS growth. 
apart from this there are a certain other aspects where a company is looking for one is survival of the company so it is something very important for the company and other one is the social responsibility so under this only your whatever the csr corporate social responsibilities will come into the equation so when it's come to the corporate objectives it is not only the financial objectives of the organization corporate objectives are combination of financial objectives and other objectives like this and the next area that we are going to learn if you take an organization there are a different kind of stakeholders so these stakeholders will have an impact on the company's corporate objectives so what we are going to see the impact of the different stakeholders on corporate objectives before looking at the impact of each stakeholder on the corporate objectives you should know what are the types of stakeholders that normally a company has so normally if i take the stakeholders broadly we can split into three categories one is internal stakeholders other one is the external stakeholders other one is the connected stakeholders if i am giving you certain examples for the internal stakeholders you can take maybe management employees if i give some examples for the external stakeholders such as government and the society and regulatory bodies if i give you some examples for the connected stakeholders shareholders debt providers financial institutes and customers suppliers these are certain examples of the connected stakeholders and the next one that you should know different types of stakeholders and their objectives so different different stakeholders will have different different objectives if i take an example for the shareholders the objective can be maybe getting dividends maximization of the shareholder wealth capital gain so these are the certain uh, objectives of the shareholders if you take the management the objective could be maybe getting some high remuneration and getting some good bonuses increment so these kind of objectives uh, employees or the management could have and if i give you another example government they might have objectives of like collecting the taxes from the companies and how many employment opportunities that they are opening up to the country so these are certain examples that i give you simply you should know different different stakeholders and the stakeholders different different objectives so i told you different different stakeholders will have different different objectives so obviously there will be some conflicts between the objectives so you should know certain examples of conflicts of the objectives so if i pick some example sometimes shareholders will have certain objectives and the management will have certain objectives where the objectives will conflict as an example shareholders wants to increase the profits and to get some higher dividend but management needs higher pay salaries so if the higher pay, if the pay increases the expenses will increase then the profits will get reduced if the profit reduces the shareholders dividends can get reduced so there is a conflict likewise shareholders and management can be there in one side versus the government government can be there in the other side so government won't taxes if the government increases the taxes the bottom line will reduces so if the bottom line reduces sometimes the management performance will be assessed based on the profits if not their bonuses will be aligned based on the profit so if the tax is coming into the equation the profits will get reduced the bonuses the management getting will get reduced as well as for the shareholders if the taxes are high the amount of return that shareholders are getting the amount of earnings the shareholders are getting will get reduced so there can be a conflict between shareholders and management in one side and the government in other side of these parties objectives there can be a conflict and the next one may be shareholders versus the employees so again sometimes shareholders needs the higher profit so employees might need higher salaries and pays so if salaries increases 
the expenses will increase if the expenses increases the profits will decrease if the profit decreases the amount that shareholders can get will get reduced so you should know certain examples of conflicts between the objectives of the different different stakeholders and the next one you should know corporate governance code and the best practices so there are a certain best practices where a company should follow if i am giving you certain examples ceo and chairman role should not be held by the same person it should be separate and if it is an established organization executive directors to non executive directors ratio it is better to maintain one is to one if it is a small company maybe for two executive directors having one non executive director is fine so if it is a established company for one executive director having one non executive director is better so having that one is to one ratio is better and the next one having a remuneration committee not allowing the executive directors to decide their salary so it's better to have a remuneration com- committee and always it is better to have an audit committee as well in audit committee always it is recommended to have one person with the finance knowledge and the next one that you should know what is this agency theory under the agency theory you should know who is this agent and the next one the agency problem and the implications implications of the agency problem so who is this agent the management or the people or the set who is acting on behalf or who is running the business on behalf of the shareholders so what is this agency problem between the management and the shareholders there can be conflicts so what are the kind of conflicts normally that these people will have normally shareholders will look for long term benefits whereas the management will look for short term benefits so they will take decisions the management will take decisions where it will benefit them in short term so if that is the case the long term shareholders objectives and short term management objectives will not be aligned so there is a problem right so there are a certain implications because of this agency problem eventually what management will do they will take the decisions where they will get short term benefits in other side the long term benefits will get compromised so likewise there are a certain implications which is there because of the agency problem so the next one that you should know the things that you can do to overcome the agency problem so if i give you some examples that you could to overcome the agency problem maybe performance related pay performance related pay if not giving share option scheme for the management so these are certain examples or the methods that you can use in order to overcome the agency problem and the next one that you should know how to measure the corporate objectives so when it's come to the measure in the corporate objectives one of the very important thing that you can use which is the ratios so if you take the ratios there are several types of ratios that you should know one is the profitability ratio other one is the liquidity ratio other one is the efficiency ratio and maybe the solvency ratios and maybe investor ratios so if i am giving you certain examples for the profitability ratio such as roce operating profit margin gross profit margin and asset turnover so these are certain examples for the profitability ratios and the liquidity ratios may be the current ratio and the quick ratio and for the efficiency ratios inventory days receivable days payable days so these are certain ratios that you can use with the to assess whether a company is achieving their corporate objectives or not so next one is the solvency ratio under that you can take maybe the interest cover and gearing and for the investor ratios you can take maybe return on equity and dividend cover and you might take maybe the pe ratio and you can take the earnings per share and you can take dividend yield 
and you can take earning shield so these are certain ratios that you can use to measure whether a company is achieving the corporate objectives with regard in the investors and the final and the fourth main area that you should know in this particular section financial and other objectives of a not-for-profit organization so under that the first thing that you should know the relationship between not-for-profit organizations financial objectives and other objectives so normally for not-for-profit organizations they will not have that much of big financial objectives normally they will have other objectives if you take an example maybe in a school so your objective can be making the students pass if not maintaining a pass rate more than 95 percent if you take a hospital they will not have a financial objective mainly they will have other objectives like okay successful number of treatments so if you take not-for-profit organization normally rather than the financial objectives they will have other objectives to achieve and the next one that you should know about this 3e concept which is value for money concept so under this the the three e's that you should know first one is the economy what is this economy means not overspending not spending for unwanted thing spending a correct amount for the correct thing and next one is being efficient which is efficiency under the efficiency you should get maximum output from whatever the spending that you are doing and final one is being effective so effectiveness is the final one that means from whatever the money that you are spending you should be able to achieve your objectives and the targets and the final one that you should know how to measure or how to assess whether a not-for-profit organizations are achieving their objectives or not so how you can measure it first thing you should set proper target for each and every objective setting proper target for each and every objective and setting target itself is not enough you should monitor each and every target that you set and maybe you can go for a benchmarking as well where you can compare yourself with the other people or with your company's previous year's performance as well so this is an express or quick recap of the section which is financial management functions